Hey, good evening, baseball fans. Like many of you, I was deeply disappointed to see that the owners and the players could not come to an agreement yesterday on regarding the 2022 season uh, and going forward with the new labor agreement. It was very easy for me to get frustrated with the players and also with the owners, but I also have to kind of put things a bit in perspective too. And that's why I like have the card before you right now. So and to my knowledge, there's really just been one player that's really suffered the ultimate price of going against the owners. Uh, and the current players have a lot to owe to him and his legacy for going up against the reserve clause back in the 1969, after the 1969 season in 1970. And that's Kurt Flood. The card you see before you is a 58 tops Kurt Flood. It's his rookie card. Um, he was not his first team though. He played for Cincinnati for on and off just in a couple games for a few seasons and got traded over to the Cardinals uh, and appeared obviously in 1958 with the team and went on to have a very good career with them. Um, this card was given to me by my father when I was a kid because he was of the mindset that you know, if you're gonna be a baseball fan, you need to learn about Kurt Flood and his sacrifices for the game. And at that point, I didn't really kind of understand what he was talking about. But over time, you know, I was that name kind of still resonated with me, Kurt Flood, Kurt Flood, as much as he would talk about Lou Brock and Bob Gibson and Stan Musial, some of his big heroes when he was a kid, he would always kind of come back to Luke, Kurt Flood. Um, and I think for the first time I really started learning more about Kurt Flood was the Ken Burns baseball documentary when I was in high school, uh, when it was released during, oddly enough, the last labor stoppage that we had back in uh, the 1994 season. So there was some synergy around that concept right there, but Kurt Flood is interviewed throughout that documentary, especially when they start getting into the 60s and 70s about the reserve clause. So what Kurt Flood did uh, and why he ended up suffering the ultimate price was the Cardinals traded he and uh, several other players to the Philadelphia Phillies in 1969. Philadelphia did not have the best reputation for its treatment of its African-American players at that time. Now, granted, I'm not from the area, so I don't have any like subjective understanding of it, but this is from what my understanding has been and what other previous players had probably said and communicated to Kurt Flood over the years before he actually was traded. So he wanted to have some autonomy at this point in his career because he was already 31. He'd already played over 10 years in Major League Baseball. Where he's like, I want to have the autonomy to go where I want to go and I want to have the choice of not going to certain places if I choose not to. So he went against the owners at that point and went against Major League Baseball to challenge the reserve clause. Um, there's a famous league um, letter that he sent um, after he worked with Marvin Miller who obviously went on and represented the players when they finally actually won and ended up forming a union and going against Major League Baseball and eventually had free agency by the 70s. But there was a famous letter that he wrote to the commissioner. Um, and, and it reads this way. This was written on December 24th of 1969 after the trade had occurred. After 12 years in the major leagues, I do not feel I'm a piece of property to be bought, sold, irrespective of my wishes. I believe that in any system which provides, produces, that results in and violates my basic rights as a citizen and is inconsistent with the laws of the United States and several other states. It is my desire to play baseball in 1970 and I'm capable of playing. I have received a contract offer from the Philadelphia club, but I believe I have the right to consider other offers from other clubs before making my decision. I therefore request that you make it known to all major league clubs my feelings on this matter and advise them of my availability for the 1970 season. That was a letter he coined or wrote to the commissioner Bowie Kuhn who did not agree with him and it went unheard and was trying to enforce him going to the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, his 1970 tops card actually has him in, you know, in a Phillies uniform. It was like an airbrush hat I believe they had on there so it wasn't, he never really appeared in a Philadelphia Philly uniform at that point. And later actually returned to baseball a year later after he sat out a season when he kept appealing it um, with the Washington Senators before then retiring. Uh, but he kind of played the ultimate price. Not only did he like lose a season, but he was kind of blacklisted by a lot of teams thereafter. And like, I think the Washington Senators were the few teams that actually wanted to give him a chance. Uh, and, and he'll kind of articulate that it really broke his soul at that point, that he didn't have that opportunity um, to have the backing of other players getting behind him 
at that time, the big superstars and kind of joining in like they did years later when eventually they got free agency. Um, you know, Kurt Floyd has a very interesting story if you want to kind of look it up and you know some of his struggles after his career are pretty well documented and he was very open about it um, throughout the rest of his life from thereafter. Uh, but so the reason I did this video is just to kind of point out that you know even though I'm really upset with the players and the owners at the moment um, there's a history there of the owners really taking advantage of the players that goes back what, you know, decades into this game. And I understand why those two sides are just so at odds um, at this point, despite my wishes, baseball fans' wishes, and probably many within baseball's wishes that they would find an agreement to be able to get along. And I, I fear that Flood, who paid the ultimate price as a player in a sense, um, now the, we're gonna pay the ultimate price as a fan base of not seeing baseball again um, which was hard to believe after going through the strike back in 1994, having potentially like now that happen again when other leagues have just figured it out. Um, you know, I can't speak highly enough of just how the NBA is such a model for working in tandem between the owners, the players, and the league itself to make sure that the product is viable and the stars are marketed. Um, baseball, you know, for all the greatness it has, that's one thing that they just still are struggling with to this day and are just trying to squeeze every little dollar out of it and don't know how to share. They don't know how to play in the play box and the sandbox together. And it's really sad. Um, so that's my video for the evening. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other people have some thoughts on it. Um, and I'll return obviously with another video soon, probably going back to some White Sox cards and kind of talking about some Hall of Famers thereafter. But this was the guy I kind of immediately thought about after I kind of did a post-mortem after the news yesterday. Have a great evening.